One useful thing that we can also do with these probability tables uh, for any of these examples, but we're going to start off with just these two, is that we can also plot uh, the PMF and the CDF. And remember, data visualization is a way that we can kind of help um, tell a story a little bit more effectively so we can actually see what's going on. Because from looking at this right now, uh, it's kind of just a whole bunch of numbers. Yes, we can dive into them and we can figure out answers, but it's a little bit, uh, it's not as easy as just being able to kind of look at a graphic. So what we can do is we can also use our outcome as our x-axis, and we can use either the PMF or the CDF as the y-axis, and we can kind of see like what's going on with our, uh, with our random variable. Okay, so what we can do, let's go ahead and give this guy a shot. So we'll start off, um, because my space is limited, I'll do the plotting the PMF and the CDF for our regular dice example, and then we'll come over and look at the PMF and CDF plotting with our kind of weird dice example. Okay, so here we go. I am going to go ahead and plot this guy just like this, and we'll start off with having this be a PMF graph. And I'm going to erase this little notation so that we've got just a little bit more room. All right, so like I said before, on the x-axis, we are going to put our outcomes. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so 0, we'll put 1 here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you know what? I'll even put 7 out here. I erased it down. Well, what the heck? We'll put it back up. 7, 0 out of 6, and 1. OK, so let's put 7 up there as well. And then on our y-axis, we're going to do like the probability that it's going to happen. So it goes from 0 all the way up to 1. And uh, to make it a little easier, I'm going to put it in 1, 2, 3, Four, five in our like six steps. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so we've got our PMF, and how we draw these is a little bit different uh, than how we draw. They're, they're basically like these stems with a little circle at the top. Okay, so the probability that we roll a one with this standard dice is one sixth. So if this is, we'll have this be 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, and then to 1. All right, so what we do is we draw just a little line and like a little circle or peg at the top. And then 2 is the same probability. So we draw a little guy up and a little guy up. And if you notice, these are all the same. Now 7 is the one that's different because 7 didn't have a probability. Well, it did. Its probability is just 0. I'll put this one in orange and it would just sit as 0 kind of right down on the line. And let me actually put it on the line so we're not confused why it's offset. And here we go. Right there on our line. Okay, what is interesting about this one is that this distribution actually has a name and it's called uniformly distributed. Why? Well, because each of the outcomes have the exact same probability of success. So that's how we would draw our PMF. So just kind of like that. Now what we can do is we can also, instead of having our PMF, we can instead put up our CDF. So I'm going to erase our probabilities. We'll start from the beginning again, and we'll see a little bit here. Okay, so we are just going to plot the CDF values now on our graphic. So we're going to label this as C CDF. All right, so it starts up at 1 sixth, 
and then the next one goes up to 2 6 because this is saying what is the probability of being 2 or fewer and it is 2 6 and the next one comes up to 3 6 the next one comes up to 4 6 then we go to 5 6 and then we go up to 6 6 and if we even go up to 7 the only thing that changes is that it doesn't move. We can go 7, 8, 9, whatever, and the probability of being less than or equal to that value is still just equal to 1. So we can plot these, and it's super handy. We're able to see, oh, the probability of being less than or equal to 5 is equal to our 5, 6. So it's just another way that we can kind of represent what's happening in our probability tables with how the probability mass function and the probability or in the cumulative distribution function look. Uh, remember that you know the rules still hold. So the sum of the values on the PMF should equal to one. The last value on the CDF should be one. And uh, it's just kind of a cool way to be able to look at this and to think about our probabilities. All right, so let's do another example, but let's use this example uh, with our strange dice. So let's go ahead and erase this real quick. And we'll do the same thing. We'll start off with our PMF, and we'll move to our CDF. Okay. So erase that. And let's start off, like I said, with our PMF. Okay, so this one, notice how our outcomes are only going to go from 0 to 3. So we don't even have to worry about 4, 5, 6, 7. And so for 0, what we have, well, let me use a different color. The probability of rolling a 0 is actually 3 sixths. So we're going to take this guy and come all the way up to our 3 sixths. And then 1 is this guy, 1 6, 2, 1 6, and 3 is 1 6. And then we'd have zeros otherwise. And so we've got a different probability mass function where we can see just real quickly that, hey, uh, there's a whole lot of probability of rolling a 0, and then everything else is pretty low. OK, so let's plot this CDF now. So I'm going to kind of erase these guys again. I'll leave the first one alone because it is the same value at 3, 6. And let's put up our next value. So for the 1, we'd go up to 4, 6. 2, we come up to 5, 6. And 3, we come up to 6, 6. And if we continued on down the road, so let's say we had, remember, a 4 here. That'd be 0 out of 6, and that'd be 1. And so this guy could come up. Notice nothing changed. From here on out, any of these other values, if we put them in, it's going to be the probability of the event or anything before it. And so, well, you can't be this high. So everything before it is just the probability of 1. So once again, this would be a C. D, F, our cumulative distribution function. So that's a way that we can visually represent what's happening here and with the probability so we can see like what's the probability of these events in fact 